In this video, we're going to see how to implement swipe gestures in Android with Kotlin. A quick intro, and then we're going to jump right in and look at code. First, why do we want to use gestures? Gestures help us declutter our screen because a user can take an action based on swiping up, down, left, or right without pressing a button. And without needing a button, we have one less widget on our screen. So we'll look at this in a little bit greater detail in a few moments, but what we want to think about with the gesture is the user e is either going left to right or right to left, top to bottom, or bottom to top. I've created a new branch for our project because this is going to be part of a series of videos where we go from a master screen to a detail screen using live data. Nonetheless, this branch is called event detail screen. And because we are going to be using multiple screens, I'm going to implement gestures in the main activity. Here's how we can use an activity with fragments in our application. This black box with rounded corners represents an activity, and the fragment is the look and feel that you see inside of the activity. So what we can do is swap out this fragment with another fragment, and in our case we're going to be using a master detail flow where one fragment is going to be the master, the other is going to be the detail. That will come in a later video, but I just want to show here that the activity is something that manages these different fragments if we choose to do it that way. Now I'm in my activity, and there are several different ways we can implement gestures. I think the easiest and cleanest way is to make an inner class. We'll call it diary gesture listener, which extends gesture detector. Simple on gesture listener. What's nice about this is that the simple on gesture listener implements several methods that we may or may not want to use. We only have to provide implementation in this class for the methods that we do want to use. So the method that we want to use in this case is a one called onFling. And you notice as I start typing, it gives me a bit of overwrite here. So a fling event represents a user pressing on the screen and then swiping up, down, left, right, something like that. Now, if I type on up above, you'll notice there are several other events I can subscribe to if I want, like on double tap, on down, on, on long press, so on and so forth. But for simple swipe, on fling is all we need. Nonetheless, these parameters I want to rename so they'll be a bit more self-documenting. Let's call this first one the down event because this represents the user pressing down on our screen. And the next one we're going to call the move event because that indicates the user moving his or her finger across the screen and then lifting up at a certain point. And we change the super call as well. Now from here, uh, within our method body, we can do a bit of math. So we're going to say var diff x, the difference in x, equals move event, question mark, uh, so we're saying this is nullable, dot x, question mark, the x is nullable again. Uh, we'll cover that in just a minute. Minus down event, and then we'll give that a double exclamation to say we acknowledge that the down event will not be null, dot x. And I'll explain this in just a moment. Let's do the same thing for y first, then I'll explain it all together. So var diff y equals move event dot y, question mark, minus down event dot uh, double exclamation dot y. All we're doing here is we're measuring the distance which the user swiped. That's going to be important later so that we can distinguish between what might have been a swipe and just an accidental touch of the screen. So the x is this distance in yellow boxes that you see across here and the y is the distance in blue boxes that you see going across here. In this case I'm assuming these are two different swipe events, by the way, that just happen to happen on the same screen. They happen at two different times. They intersect, but that's irrelevant. They don't necessarily have to intersect. Now the question mark in Kotlin says this might be null. And if so, if I try to invoke a property or a function on it, that function or property is simply going to cascade back a null. The double exclamation means I'm comfortable this is not null. If it is indeed null, it's going to lead us to a runtime error, which is not what we want. Nonetheless, what I can do is instead of returning null, I can use something called the Elvis operator, which means if this happens to be null, just return this value as a default instead. So in Kotlin, the question mark colon means use this value if the operation on the left is going to result in a null, just default it to 0.0. .0.
We're going to need to implement a few if tests here because we know that a user will rarely swipe in a perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical direction. So we have to figure out what the primary direction is. Okay, easy enough. If math.abs, that gives us absolute value, so we don't care if it's negative or positive. So math.abs abs diff x is greater than math.abs diff y, then what we're going to do here is we'll say this is a left or right swipe because the difference in x is bigger than the difference in y. Otherwise, we're going to say it is either, this is either a bottom or top swipe. Now, you notice something really peculiar here. We get an error because it says, I don't know if this is a double float int or long. Well, part of the reason is what the move event returns is one type, which is typically a float, but this 0.0, .0 I haven't said whether it's a float or a double. Little secret in both Java and Kotlin. If I have just a plain number standing out like this and I want to indicate that it's a float, I'll put an F afterwards. And you see, as soon as I do that, it knows that this diff X and diff Y are going to be float values, not double values. If I don't put that F there, it assumes it's a double. The only difference being a float occupies four bytes in memory, a double occupies eight. So just different sizes, nothing crazy beyond that. But nonetheless, you see, uh, we know now whether it's a primarily a left or right or a top to bottom. Okay, now we have to figure out a couple things. Now we have to figure out, is it a swipe that's going in the leftward direction or is it a swipe going in the rightward direction? And additionally, what is our threshold? In other words, what's just an accidental tap versus a swipe? Let's start with a swipe threshold. So I'm going to make a constant, private val swipe threshold equals 100. So uh, 100 pixels essentially, or 100 units, whatever units we're using here. So uh, now what I'll say in my, in my left, right, I'll add another if test. I'll say if math.abs diff x greater than swipe threshold. So this is a significant event. And uh, math.abs velocity x is greater than, okay, we need a velocity max as well. So let's say swipe velocity threshold. The swipe velocity, the velocity threshold, what this means is how fast is the user going. So if the user is hovering, we don't consider it a swipe. A swipe is typically something relatively fast. So we'll say again, private val swipe velocity threshold equals 100. I found that number works well for me. You might find a different number works for you. But nonetheless, we're only going to process the swipe if the uh, both the difference and also the velocity we consider to be something substantial. Okay, now here comes the real math. I'm going to say if diff x is greater than zero, then we're going to say this is a right swipe. Else, left swipe. Now what do I mean by that? Note that diff x is the difference between the move events x position and the down events x position. Let's go back to our graph and consider what those positions are. So one of these is a move event and one is a down event. Let's take the example that the down event starts in this number three cell or this number three pixel if you want. That's when the user presses down, then the user drags his or her finger right and lifts it up where the move event occurs. And the move event is occurring approximately at this eight position here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the move event and subtract from that the down event. So eight minus three is five. Now, as I look at this, I realize there are actually six cells, so I probably should do nine minus three is six, but nonetheless, it's a positive number, and that's the point. So if we start at the three and we lift at the eight or the nine, we have a positive number, and that indicates the user is swiping from left to right, or what we're going to call a right swipe. Now, what if it happens the other way? Well, the down event happens here at the, again, the eight or nine position, depending on how you look at it. The user presses down, swipes from the right to the left, or in other words, what we would call a left swipe. And then the user lifts his or her finger 
at the three position. So what we're going to do again is we're going to take the final position, which is the move position of three. We're going to subtract the starting position, which is eight, and we're going to end up with a negative number, either five or six, depending on how you count it here. Either way, a negative number, and we know that we have a swipe that is going in the leftward direction. So we don't want to put too much logic in this method itself, and we're also in an inner class that is an inner class of our activity. So what we can do now is simply invoke a method in the enclosing activity class. In Kotlin, we can do that by saying this, which refers to the current object, but we can actually specify the enclosing object, the activity itself, by saying this, and then an at symbol, and then main activity. And that's what Kotlin considers a label, because we're saying we want to refer to this object which is represented by this entire class, not simply the inner class. After that, we can invoke uh, a method that we're going to make up, like on swipe right. That method doesn't exist yet, so it redlines, and I'm going to say create member function, and notice here we have our on swipe right member function. Very similar for our left swipe, we'll simply say this, and then at main activity, so we're saying we want to invoke a method or a function in our enclosing class, the main activity, and then we'll say on left swipe. Again, a function I've not yet made, but I can let Android Studio do it for me. I'll say create member function, and there we go. And at this point now, we know we have a left swipe and a right swipe. Okay, we need to do something similar for top or bottom, and I'll go back and show our graph again in just one moment. So let's repeat a similar if test that we have above to make sure that we have a substantial event. Uh, I'm going to change diff x here to diff y, because when it's going top down, we're going to be com comparing the y position, not the x position. Now, inside of this, we'll say if diff y is greater than zero, then this must be a swipe from the top. So we'll say this at main activity dot on swipe top. Again, function I've not yet made, but no problem. I can simply let Android Studio create it for me. And then any event handling I want to do from a top swipe, I'm going to put here. Else, we'll say this, and again, this at main activity, on swipe bottom, just like so. And we'll make the function and create the function just like so. So you see, now what we've done with this inner class is we're looking at when the user presses and when the user lifts. And then we are invoking a set of functions on the enclosing class when the user takes that activity. Let's go back to our graph and take a look at the mathematics behind a top swipe versus a bottom swipe. So once again, we have a starting position and an ending position. And you see a down event, which is when the user presses, the user drags his or her finger and then lifts at the move event. You see that our numbers are going downward here. Uh, so once again, we're going to take the end position, which is seven and we're going to sub subtract the start position, which is 2. And again, looking at this, I probably should have made that 8 minus 2. But nonetheless, you see that we end up with a positive number. So a positive number is a swipe from the top down. Now, if we swap these around, we have the down event starting at the bottom of the screen and ending at the top of the screen. Then our, down, our starting position is the down position of 7, and our ending position is 2. So we take the ending position, we subtract the starting position, and we, subtract, and we end up with a negative number. So a negative number is a swipe from the bottom to the top. Uh, you might prefer to call that, you can use your own language there if you want to call that a bottom swipe or a top swipe, whatever you want to call it. And really, you could even change the direction where you're doing the math here. You could start with the down event and subtract the move event you would just get the opposite of what I just told you. So uh, I'll leave that up to you, whether a negative number is a top swipe or a bottom swipe. It, but you can see how I'm going here, I hope. And that is understanding a swipe from the top or understanding a swipe from the bottom. I realize that the, the words I'm using are a little bit confusing as well because for a right, right swipe, I was saying go in the right direction. Here for a top swipe, I'm saying start at the top and go to the bottom. So here again, if you prefer to call that a bottom swipe, I'll leave that up to you. But uh, this is just the way that I'm doing it. So now what we'll do is just a couple more things we need to do to get everything wired up. First, I pause the video for a moment and I put in a few toasts so that we can actually watch this demonstrate in the emulator as I do a top, bottom, right swipe, so on and so forth. Secondly, I have my inner class, but I have not used it yet within my activity. So I need to start to use it. So first of all, let's say private, latent var, and then detector. 
and then gesture detector compat. And this is something that's going to help us to wire up that inner class to our activity itself. Now down within our onCreate method, let's do that wiring up. Let's say detector equals gesture detector compat, and then we'll pass in a reference to the current object, and then we will also pass in a brand new object of our inner class here. So we'll say diary gesture listener, just like so. Fix a quick spelling error. I'm sure you saw that before I did, but the red line helped me find it. One more thing that we need to do is that since we're in an activity, there's a function that we can override where it is listening for the user tapping on the screen. And we need to listen for that. That is called on touch event. So notice that when I'm in the enclosing class, I can just start typing on touch event and it will give me this overridden method. Now note that this returns a Boolean. If we return true, we're saying we have handled the touch event, nobody else needs to handle it. If we return false, we're saying we've not handled the touch event, somebody else needs to handle it. More on that in just a moment. First of all, let's say if detector, remember this uh, thing that we created up here, detector.onTouchEvent. So we're simply taking this touch event and we're passing it to the on touch event, to the uh, detector that we created above. Now that's going to return true if it handled the onTouch event. So let's simply put the word true there. More on that in just a moment. Otherwise, if the detector onTouch event returns false, let's go ahead and delegate up to our superclass and have that handle the onTouch event. Now here's a neat thing about Kotlin. You notice I've taken away the return. And you notice I have a red line because I've taken away the return. In Kotlin, what we can do is we can put the word return before an if test. And then it simply returns whatever it sees in the appropriate curly. So in other words, if the detector that we created through this series of events here, if that does handle the event, then we're going to return true and we're going to say the event was handled, nobody else needs to handle it. On the other hand, if this does not handle the event or it returns false, it's going to go to the onTouch event super function call and simply return whatever that does. If, it, if the super call returns true, this whole function returns true. If the super call returns false, the whole function returns false. So one more thing to tidy up there, then you notice that right now I have a return statement here that's just return super on fling. I'm not actually taking into account whether we handled this touch event or not. And we know that's why we had this if test right here. So let's do this. Let's give each of these if tests that's comparing the threshold of the uh, swipe and the velocity, let's give them an else part. And let's have that simply invoke super on fling. Just like so, we'll take away this return. Ah, we'll leave that return for just a moment. And do the same thing up above. We'll say else super on fling. Now we know super on fling, just like on fling itself, is going to return a Boolean. So that case is covered. Now let's go ahead and within the the upper part of the if test where we've decided that the difference in y coordinates is greater than the threshold and the velocity is greater than the threshold, let's have those both return true, just like so. And up above on our left right, we're going to have this guy return true, just like so. And then we can use the trick that we learned up above, where we put the return statement before an if test, provided that each condition of the if test returns a true or a false, and we'll simply tr treat that as our return. We take the return and put it here. And let's see how it works. The emulator is now running. Let's see what we have. I swipe to the right and you notice that the right swipe toast comes up. I swipe to the left and you notice that the left swipe toast comes up. I swipe, swipe from the top to the bottom and you notice the top swipe toast comes up. I swipe from the bottom to the top and you notice that the bottom swipe toast comes up. And here again, you might call those different things. You might call what I call top swipe, you might call bottom swipe, depending on if you're using the origin or the destination. But nonetheless, you see that each of these toasts came up when the respective function was called, bottom, top, left, and right, and it was invoked from this inner class that we created. More to come in our future videos. I sure hope this one has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.